And out of the South Tunnel, here come the Auburn Tigers. And out of the North Tunnel, the Alabama Crimson Tide. Welcome to ESPN's Rivalry Week, presented by Pontiac, celebrating 20 years of college football. Tonight, the Alabama Crimson Tide takes on the Auburn Tigers. All season, ESPN Saturday Night College Football will be broadcast in high definition, presented by Phillips and Best Buy. Hi, everybody. Ron Franklin along with Mike Gottfried, and welcome to the Iron Bowl. There are none that are more exciting than this, regardless of the records. We need to start off by saying this has been a week of distractions here in Auburn because of rumors and innuendo that the head coach, Tommy Tuberville, might be losing his job after this game tonight. As we progress in the ball game this evening, Mike will talk more about that. Mike, as far as these two teams are concerned, they want to do the same thing. They both want to run the football, yet you think the two guys under center are the most important fellas in this contest tonight. Ron, they really do. I think both these teams are going to come out and try to run the football. Uh, Williams and Carnell uh, is going, both going to get a chance to run the football, but both quarterbacks, the team that protects the quarterback the best and the quarterback for whichever team hits the big play has the best chance to win this game. It's going to come down to the quarterbacks. The two head coaches in this one tonight, the gentleman in question, Tommy Tuberville, fifth season here in Auburn, Alabama. And across the way from him, brand new member in the SEC, Mike Shula, in his first season, 15 seasons as an NFL assistant coach. Well, Alabama leads the series. The away team has won the last four meetings. At last year in Tuscaloosa, Auburn defeated number nine Alabama by a 10 point margin, 17 to 7. Alabama won the toss. They deferred. Auburn will receive and be on offense first this evening. Robinson teased the ball. You look at uh, Carnell Williams, one of the deep men, along with Aroma Shadu, one of the wide receivers, number one. And the Iron Bowl for 2003 set to go. Ron, Alabama will try to pin Auburn in the short side of the field, but I think Auburn's going to try to bring it back to the field. Here comes the kick, and they kick it to the far right side, and Carnell Cadillac Williams will take a knee. So it gives us an opportunity to introduce the starters. And, of course, Jason Campbell, the junior out of Taylorsville, Mississippi. A lot of pressure on this young man because everybody's been saying, we'll stop your run. Jason, you've got to beat us passing. And that's exactly the game plan tonight. He's been criticized uh, heavily here at Auburn, but Jason Campbell can play this quarterback position. He can throw the ball very well. Crowd of over 86,000 jam-packed into the stadium. Great anticipation, as always, for the Iron Bowl. From an eye formation, Williams, five, breaks it out, has ten, he's loose. At midfield, Cadillac, at the 20, a cut ball, touchdown over, 80 yards. to attempt the extra point. He's got it. Mike Gottfried. 
that there, a wow is not even the, the proper exclamation point to put on this one. What a way to open a rivalry like this. A great call, Ron, because they ran a draw on first down. You watch, they go set the draw up. Alabama really rushes upfield. Carnell Williams breaks the outside. And you think about the embattled coach and the players wanting to get out in this field to play for their coach. They made a statement on the first play. Mike, let's give credit to a number of people, but Monrico Crittenden threw a key block to help Springy. <laughs> Carnell Williams. And here's... Here's the really interesting part of the story on him. When you look at scoring this season, big article in the paper, the Birmingham paper yesterday, Carnell grew up wanting to go to, bay, to play for the Crimson Tide. As it turned out, he came here to visit. His, uh, his family really liked Auburn, but he had committed to Tennessee. He winds up here on the Plains. And there are about 86,000, maybe minus a few uh, Alabama fans who are really pleased that he did make that decision. Yost to kick it off. What a beginning to our ball game. Two yards deep, Brooks. And Brooks will be shoved out of bounds just across the 20 yard line. So the starters offensively, Brody Croyle, sophomore out of Rainbow City. This, to me, one of the gutsiest performers, not just in this conference, but in college football. Partially separated a shoulder in game one. It has continued to happen, and here we are in the in the final regular season game. And Ron, LSU blitzed him, and now you're going to see Auburn blitz him every chance they get. It's up to the offensive line whether they'll give him time enough to throw the football. His final regular season game of the Southeastern Conference. Of course, they play Hawaii next week. Here's Sean Williams. He says, I have an answer. Takes it out across the 30. That's going to be a gain of about 13 yards in the play. Here are the starters on offense for Alabama. Williams, Tim Castile, the fullback. Clark, the tight end. Uh, Bolton and Triundus Luke, the wide receivers. Up front for the offensive line, Justin Smiley, probably the best athlete up there. Dennis Alexander, a senior out of Memphis. He is a team co-captain. Luke in motion. And they go back to Williams. Bounces it to the outside behind blockers Alexander and Mathis. Carlos Dansby is there to make the tackle. Which gives us an opportunity to give you the defensive starters for Auburn. Edens, McNeil, Spencer Johnson, and Reggie Torbor. Torbor can really bring it on the pass rush. The linebackers, Williams, Thomas, and Dansby. And actually, it all starts with Dansby. He is the number one headhunter in that defense. Hobbs, a walk-on, and a Carlos Rogers at the corners. Herring and Rose Green are the safeties. Second down, Bama. Sean Williams, nothing to the right. He takes it to the left, close to the first down, up around the 42-and-a-half yard line. Dansby and Thomas combined. Well, Dave Rader, the offensive coordinator, is going to try to protect Brody Croyle in the passing game by running the football. And then once you get the run going, then the pass follows. I like this plan by Mike Shula and Dave Rader. One of the things that Dave Rader told us in our phone conversation with him on Wednesday was that Alabama needed desperately to have something good to happen to them early. Well, it is Auburn who made something good happen for themselves. Sean Williams, three carries, 23 yards. Gets it again. Nothing to the right. Tries to spin off, and he's not going to have the first down. Junior Rose Green is there, and Dansby is the man with the pressure that really upended the play. Yeah, Junior Rose Green benefited from Dansby getting in there because all of a sudden it spilled out to Dansby. Now Alabama's got to punt the football here and then the football game. Last week, Ron, when we watched the punnies, Punters from Alabama, Brian Bostic, a little slow getting it yes. off last week. If I'm Auburn's, not on this play because too close to the 50 yard line, but I go after his punts tonight. Bo Freeland gets the boot away. This is a high tail wagger. 
good coverage kick at the four. It's going to take an Alabama halt, and it's going to be touched dead at the one-yard line. Thurman Ward is the man who comes underneath that 57-yard punt as Bo Jackson walks along the sidelines. 7 to nothing to Auburn on top on the strength of a Carnell Cadillac Williams 80-yard run on the first play from scrimmage. Now Auburn takes the ball over at the one-and-a-half-yard line. And we'll get to the remainder of the starters and offense. We got to talk about Campbell and Williams, and then came the touchdown. Williams hit behind the line of scrimmage. There's a safety, Anthony Bryant. So, Mike, we're still not going to be able to introduce the Auburn no. offense. Ron, a great job by Anthony Bryant getting penetration and getting in the backfield to tackle Carnell Williams for the safety. Now get good field position. You'll see he slanted and beat the block of the center, I believe, Danny Lindsay. Well, no place to go for Carnell. Give credit to special teams. They get those oh, two points right there. Brian Bostic with a great punt. Bo Freeland, I'm sorry, Bo Freeland. Boy, he knocked it dead at the one and a half yard line. And then on the very first play, Bryant gets the penetration. You see the reaction from his de defensive teammates. And all of a sudden, that grabs momentum away from the Auburn Tigers as Bama will get the football back. And it is now seven to two. Big punt. Now you get good field position if you're Alabama. So they're not going to punt this one. Philip Yost is going to put it on a tee and uh, and kick it away. And pro throw along with Brandon Brooks are the two deep men. We have seen a lot, Michael, of pro throw in the latter part of this season. They really look to him now as a go-to guy because he's such a game breaker. Here's Yost's kick. He's going to kick this one out of bounds. Ron Franklin, Mike Godfrey to Adrian Karsten coming to you from a jam-packed house here uh, in Auburn, Alabama. The 80 or the 68th meeting between these two clubs. And you know with the penalty here, Mike, this is going to give them a scrimmage uh, from the 50-yard line. Oh, so field position. Alabama will put the ball in play at the 50-yard line. First down. This might be a good time to take a shot if you're Alabama you ran the ball very successfully three four times now play action pass Ray Hudson comes into the lineup the junior out of Bonifay Florida replacing Shad Williams at tailback Luke in motion play action looking still looking and going to be tackled behind the line of scrimmage by Corboy and I have a feeling the way he was looking, he was looking for a stop and go, and maybe the receiver ran the wrong route. Yeah, Ron, I, I thought it was a good time for the deep ball. You you go after him right there, and I, I believe you're right. I think it was a broken pattern, and Brody Croyle did the wise thing and uh, didn't throw it, a, throw it to him for an interception. Ray Hudson coming into the ball game. Shit. I think he was injured on that last play. Ray Hudson. Kenneth Darby has now come into the lineup. Number 34, the redshirt freshman out of Huntsville Butler. Good look at Kenneth. They pitch it back to him. Good pursuit for the Auburn defense. Going to be stacked at the line of scrimmage. Will Herring. Redshirt freshman out of Opelika. And there's Hudson on the far sideline. Came in for one play. Had been suspended for last week's ball game and only one play in this Iron Bowl game. And uh, he is on the bench being checked over by the trainers. Yeah, Darby's only had 33 carries this entire year. Inexperienced.
Sean Williams checks back into the lineup at tailback. Third down, line to make is the 40. You show Auburn with blitz, and here they come. They pick it up, going to go on top, near sideline, and just a little too long for Fletcher. Good job by Alabama's offensive line. They picked up the blitz. Here's the blitz. Dansby, number 11, coming. He gets picked up. Zach Fletcher, the intended receiver. Kevin Hobbs running step for step. Just ran out of room. Well, what a huge stop by the Auburn defense after giving up a safety on offense. Kick out of bounds. They get it at the 50, and they are only able to move one yard. And this punt is straight up in the air. Extremely short. And now takes a huge Auburn bounce. The Tigers come out smelling like a rose after what looked like could have been a disaster. 16 yards on that punt. Let's take a break. So we're back, and for you trivia buffs, that safety was the first by Alabama since the third quarter of the 1999 Auburn game. 7-2, to two, that's how we stand. Just over 10 minutes to play, opening quarter. Cadillac Williams takes it right up the middle, and he'll be stopped after a gain of one. And now it gives us an opportunity to introduce the uh, the starters. Carnell Williams, Brandon Johnson, the fullback. Cooper Wallace is the tight end. Daniels and McIntyre, the wide receivers. And up front with the offensive line, Para, Reddick, Lindsey, Monrico Crittenden, and Marcus McNeil. Williams again tries to bounce it outside. His fullback is there to try to help and couldn't help him as D'Amico Ryans is right there to make the stop for Alabama. And let's beat the starters on defense for the Crimson Tide. Anderson and Odom very good at pass rush on the outside. Anthony Bryant, who's responsible for the safety a moment ago, and Jeremy Clark are at the defensive tackles. The linebackers, Roach in the middle. Ryans uh, just sets the bar extremely high each and every week. Derek Pope, also a very physical player. And in the secondary, Charlie Pepper and Anthony Madison at the corners. Roman Harper, the quarterback back there, and Charles Jones are the safeties. Third down, they need to take it to the 42. Quick pass over the middle, got it complete. Obamato gets free. So Auburn will go for two as it is home run night here on the Plains. An 80-yard run from Scrimmage, and now a 64-yard hookup between Campbell and Ben Obamanu. And Ronnie Brown checks into the lineup to join a Cadillac Williams, both tailbacks in the game for the two-point conversion. Quarterback draw. He got it. Jason Campbell for the two points. So as we take one more look at the touchdown, Obamanu makes the catch. And look at this move right here in traffic. Bounced off the defender and takes it 64 yards. Now the two-pointer. Yeah, Jason Campbell on the quarterback draw. Mark Perra with an outstanding block. So ben Obamanu makes amends, Mike Godfrey, for the drop of the sure touchdown against Ole Miss here in the stadium. And, Ron, he, on that drive, the ball he dropped, he made three great catches on that drive to get him down there. 
but I like he stood up in the press conference after it, and uh, he really showed me a lot. Yost to kick it off for Auburn. Brooks along with Profro, the two deep men. And this will be Brooks. Slung down just shy of the 30. On the touchdown pass, what you get is one on one. Pepra and Opa Mama, Manu. And you watch Pepra. He he slides too much this way and overruns the tackle. And all of a sudden, the speed. Alabama can't catch him. Anthony Madison in pursuit. Two big plays here. An 80 yard touchdown run from scrimmage by Cadillac Williams. Set the screen. The ball is tipped and knocked out. And there's a flag at the line of scrimmage. But the ball tipped by DeMarco McNeil. Well, he read the screen pass and he was able to change directions quick on the dime. We have an illegal formation against the offense. The offense only had six players on the line of scrimmage. Penalty is declined. Third down. So with the third down, they still got to take it to the 38 and a half yard line. They had a good call on, but uh, DeMarco McNeil read the screen. Also, Dansby was coming with some heavy pressure on Brody Coyle. Let's see what the Crimson Tide comes up with here. Down 15 to 2. Coyle sets deep, drills the pass in and out of the hands of his intended receiver, Prothro. Carlos Rogers, the corner, pretty good coverage. And now Auburn's defense does the job. Third time at Alabama will have had to punt here in this opening quarter. Bro Freeland to kick. Trey Smith is the deep man. They, they're coming after this one. Coming right up the middle and he barely got it away and it's a dandy kick. Another tail wagger, but very long, and a fair catch called for and made at the 23. Auburn from their own 23, play action, looking to go long, going for everything, and he's got a man wide open, Taylor, and a flag is down at the 35-yard line. Charlie Pepper got turned around. Looked like a stutter and go by Taylor, trying to set up the corner. We have holding against the defense. That penalty is declined on the completion of the pass. First down. Right now, Alabama's back under heels. Pepper, here's the stutter and go. I didn't see hold. He definitely got faked out, Charlie Pepper. And Mike Shula's talking to him on the sideline. Pass pattern very nicely run by Courtney Taylor. And he's only a red shirt freshman out of Carrollton and the coaches said early on in the year they thought he was really going to be a good one that pass thrown and it is caught on the other side by Daniels Silas Daniels a junior out of Jacksonville takes it inside the 20 and Alabama's got to stop the bleeding here in a hurry yeah you can't give Jason Campbell all this time he sits back in his pocket he has nobody rushing him he sets one side, comes back all the way to the other side to Daniels. 
three man rush by Alabama. Interesting thing is uh, Aroma Shadu was standing just a few yards from him as if maybe somebody had run the wrong route over there and they still were wide open enough to make the catch. 20 yards on that pass play. And here comes Cadillac Williams right side. Turning those legs inside the 10 and he's down to the nine. Adrian Karsten down on the sideline. What do you got big guy? Watching and listening to the emotional level down here tonight Ron is unbelievable. I've never heard or seen anything like it very honestly. Give a lot of credit to the 43 seniors. 30 guys wearing crimson across the field. 13 over here on the Auburn side who have never beaten the Crimson Tide here in Auburn before. You think about what Alabama's been through. Four coaches in four years. Three in the last 12 months. What the seniors are doing on the sidelines on the field right now really represents the memories they want to make. The pride they're playing for. Well, this game every year is even more history and it's it's the one that is the most important as Williams takes it across you can see inside the yellow line and a first and goal Auburn Tigers you talked about stopping the bleeding I'm, I'm going to tell you something if they score here the bleeding is going to get worse because all of a sudden go back to last week when LSU got ahead they just poured it to Alabama and they went after Croyle the quarterback so this is a very important stop right here. Joe Kynes looking down at uh, his defensive play sheet. Jeremy Clark, his starter at right defensive tackle, is the man who was down, and the trainers are out there with him. Beg your pardon, 95, Childress rather than Clark. Big Ahmad Childress, 6'5, 358 pounds, a junior out of Nashville. This Auburn football team has come out here to make a statement in this first quarter. Well, everybody wondered with all the conversations about the possibility of a coaching change and all, if the kids would be distracted. Well, they were the first two days of this week. But tonight, Mike is right on. They have come out firing on every cylinder. Cadillac Williams. Right up the middle, going to be stopped after a gain of about one. Jeremy Clark is the man who's there to make the tackle on him. Five and a half minutes to play, opening quarter. It started off with fireworks. Opening play from scrimmage. Cadillac Williams goes 80 yards for the touchdown. Then they throw to Ben Obamano, who breaks a tackle as defenders ran together for Alabama. He takes it 64 yards. Two point conversion was good. And of course, there was a safety that Anthony Bryant caused, but that's the only scoring for Alabama so far. Quarterback draw. Boy, does he take a punishing hit at the five yard line? Freddie Roach is the man who got to him first. Yeah, Campbell showing his size tonight. A decent runner out of the quarterback position. Freddie Roach makes the play. But this is a very big down for this Alabama defense. If they don't stop him here, hold him to a field goal, uh, this thing could get away from him and get ugly. Antoine Odom, Jr., 6'5", 277, the bright defensive end position. And he knows what has to happen here. Campbell sets in the pocket, looking, still looking, and uh, throws this one into the ground, actually. It was very close to Courtney Taylor, but I believe Derek Pope got a hand on that pass. Yeah, had a chance for that pass. And, Ron, when people were watching a little bit ago, and you wonder why, Auburn would go for the two. Now, if they get the field goal, they're up by two scores and two point two two point plays. Every coach got that chart, and that's what it says. John Vaughn to attempt the extra point. This will be of 22 yards from the left hash mark. You see his numbers: four of eight. His longest: 34. at home and we'll take a break 407 left in this opening quarter and our new score Auburn 18 to 2 we got a minute 49 seconds until intermission Coyle another screen they go back into Hudson Hudson breaks a tackle and still fighting out of the 30 still fighting close to the 35 yard line the ball has come loose Football. 28 yards, a great second, a great third effort 
And I believe Carlos Rogers comes away with the football. Yeah, Carlos Rogers has had a big first half. Hudson, who was suspended last week, didn't play in that football game. Gives good effort here, but coughs up the football. You know what? His own man knocked the ball out. It looked like Closner, who was coming down to block. He does. The offensive lineman hitting and knocked the ball loose. And he hit it with his knee. Alabama showing blitz. Here they come right up the middle. Campbell running for his life and just throws this one away. Well, tonight's Aflac trivia question. What player has the most touchdowns in the Auburn-Alabama series? Answer coming up a little bit later on. Well, this guy down on the sideline tonight. Bo in attendance for the ball game and every place that uh, he has been this weekend. It has uh, caused quite a stir. Even among Alabama faithful who stood in line to get his autograph yesterday. Zings this one out to Daniels. And Daniels going to be slung down at the 34 yard line. You just wonder how long this defense can hang in there. They've been put on the spot every week. Joe Kynes, his defense is bending a little bit right now. They need to shut this down right here to have any chance in this football game till their offense finds themselves. This uh, Alabama defense has been on the uh, field for 31 plays already in this first half. 50 seconds until intermission. Here comes pressure again. Barely gets it away. It is caught and caught inbound. That is a spectacular effort by Courtney Taylor, the red shirt freshman. Good for 10 yards and a first down. Boy, working on Madison again. Excuse me, Ron. Just going to say Jeremy Clark was really applying some pressure, but he got it away. Well, you, how can you criticize a quarterback when he stands in there like that? Here, Madison makes the hit on the bigger receiver, Courtney Taylor. Auburn has one timeout left. And it looks like Johnson Brandon's going to head to the locker room early. Taylor, by the way, three catches, 54 yards. Well, the answer to tonight's Aflac trivia question. What player has the most touchdowns in the Auburn-Alabama series? Sean Alexander from Alabama seven touchdowns six rushing and one receiving pretty good running back I'll tell you I have a feeling break in right Mike I've bet a bunch of these guys uh, that played at Auburn and played at Alabama regardless of the records that these guys are in the pros now oh, and, they're, and watching. Bet they're watching this football game tonight Mike Shula talking with the official uh, on the far sideline and what he's discussing, I'm sure, is that extra effort by uh, by his running back, but it cost him and his own lineman knocked the ball out of his hand and caused a turnover. Yeah, at halftime, they've got to find something to hang their hat on offensively. But in fairness to Dave Rader, Mike Shula, they're gunning with, uh, with not enough weapons because their offensive line is patched up. They don't don't have any big play guys Auburn's made the big plays they haven't and Brody Croyle uh, has had so much pressure on him this evening even if they had wanted to throw deep and they did have an opportunity and it was just barely overthrown but uh, protection also is paramount in the second half 44 seconds showing on the clock in the second quarter all out blitz and the screen pass a tackle is made and the flag is thrown in the backfield, uh, Jeremy Clark. Carnell Williams was the uh, intended receiver. Alabama had the right call on right here. Played that screen as well as you can play it. Yep, he did, and he saw what was about to happen. Because if he doesn't tackle him, he's going to go for a touchdown. Holding against the defense. The penalty is 10 yards from the previous spot. The yardage is enough for a first down. 
Well, it's the only call that could have been made because you can't call pass interference yeah. behind the line of scrimmage. Here's the pressure on Campbell. And of course, it happened right in front of the Auburn bench, so there were a lot of helpers. They're calling on their right hand, and they're now uh, sister cuffs on the field here. They got us. Yep, you got to maintain poise. You certainly can't get kicked out of the ball game at this juncture. Tell you what, Alabama's defense is neat. They're giving it. They're giving all they got. Rogers Redding has called Campbell. Along with Charles Jones together. And they are having a discussion about sportsmanship right now. Trying to calm everybody down. 38 seconds left. Let's see if they go to Courtney Taylor against Madison over here on the left side. We see Alabama coming up to play bump. Blitz coming off the corner. That single coverage in the end zone. Ball is tipped. And he made the interception. Roman Harper with his second turnover in the second quarter. And that takes away either a touchdown or certain three points. Ron, they had it, though. They had Tommy Tuberville's thinking to himself, I had this touchdown right there. Courtney Taylor beats Madison, but give Madison credit. Now he went back into the receiver. Roman Harper with a great play. Let's see the ball comes off his foot. And look how far Harper has to go. And he cradles the ball to make sure that it doesn't hit the turf. Alabama football, 31 seconds left from their own 20. Hudson on the draw play. Hudson's going to have a game very close to 10 yards. Marco McNeil stops him. Fresh legs. Didn't play last week. Suspended. Was doubt whether he's going to come back and play this week. Mike Shula probably knows the whole situation. Made the decision to let him play. Shula got a timeout with 21 seconds left. We'll be right back. So we're back for a couple, maybe three plays. Mike, I think this is a huge step. Shad Williams in the first quarter, six carries, 34 yards, almost six yards a try. He's got one carry for three yards yeah, in the second quarter. I agree with you. He's been absent. Coyle steps up deep over the middle. Got a man. The ball is dropped. Boy, that is uh, Fletcher. Zach Fletcher. Let it get into his body. Mike Shula right here may just settle to kill this clock right here. Zach Fletcher wide open. Brody Croyle with a good pass. Just couldn't hold on. Brody 5 of 10, 43 yards. Pro throw in motion. He's going to go long, but here comes pressure, and Carl just has to throw this one away. He did have a man in the vicinity, but McNeil was all over it. He don't want to make a mistake right here. You got to break. Alabama did on the interception right here. You don't want to give it back to Auburn with eight seconds to go here. And Brody Crow did a wise thing, threw it in the ground. Yep, for sure. And he threw it at the feet of uh, a potential receiver. Roman Harper has uh, saved their bacon twice. You don't want to roll that dice too many times. High pass, Shad Williams. And Shad will get out of bounds. Three seconds showing on the clock. You started with a bad snap. And now you have fourth down. 
Here's the bad snap. Brody Crow handles it. Gives the ball to Shaw Williams. Figuring two seconds there, they're going to not punt, just kill the clock right here on one play. Coyle, everything he's got, and this one is a long way down, intercepted by Auburn, and that's a rose green. And with that, it is halftime. Mike Godfrey, put yourself in the place of the Alabama coaching staff at halftime. You know, what did you say to the offense? I'd like to have a couple more receivers, so it's uh, some great speed. But with what they got to do in the second half, somebody's got to make a play. They got to get the ball to pro throw, but they got to go back to what you said. Shot Williams, there are only two scores behind right here. Still can stay with their game plan. Here's the big thing, Ron, I see in this stats. One of eight on third down conversions yeah. tonight's halftime stats brought to you by Pontiac high performance. So you see the numbers total yards 324 for Auburn 109 for Alabama. Yost to kick it off and you're looking into the eyes of Tyrone Prothro number four. He's back there with Brooks and here's the kick. It's going to come to Brooks at the four. 20, 30. He just got by Yost. He may be gone. Brooks, 10, 5, touchdown, 96 yards. Sometimes you look back in the game and you've had a couple chances to put a team away and you don't get it done and the speed of the kickoff return team scores a touchdown. Bostic trying to make it an 18 to 9 ball game and he does. <laughs> Brandon Brooks. <laughs> this is the thing that's been missing tonight for Alabama. Big plays. He makes a little move there, then springs the outside. Now he beats the kicker and everybody else and gives the big play that Alabama needs. So if you were not with us off the top of the telecast tonight, Auburn, as you take one more look at this long 96 yarder. Auburn on the first play from scrimmage. Cadillac Williams went 80. And now Alabama opens the second half with that explosion. And just like that, we've got a nine-point ball game. Adrian Karsten, let's check with you. Exactly the type of thing Tommy Tuberville was worried about in a very emotional locker room just moments ago, Ron. The seniors, with tears in their eyes, didn't want anyone else to speak again except their head coach. And when he did, it was about concentration, making a play. Three big drop balls, two that should have gone for a touchdown. Ron, not to be too prophetic, but his last words to me as he came out of the tunnel and out of the field was, it just ain't my year, brother. It just ain't my year. <laughs> well, what wasn't his play, but uh, still can be his year. Well, I'll tell you one thing. The Alabama folks that have not had much to cheer about so far tonight are up and making a lot of racket across the way. That's the first touchdown return by Alabama since September the 18th, 1999 at Legion Field against Louisiana Tech. comes the pooch kick. Robinson kicks it away from the 16 yard line. Runs into his own man. Aroma should do it. He takes it up the sideline and that's going to be a almost back to the 40 yard line. Tonight's game track being brought to you by Pioneer. And here are some of those plays that was talking about in the early going. Rumors. Things that caused focus not to be there for Auburn early this week. Then Williams on the first play from scrimmage. There's the 80 yard run that got offered on the scoreboard. The defense with Dansby. Look at this play here. Boy, he took Pro Throw and just schooled him. 
on why you don't come into his area. Blitz coming right at the middle, hit behind the line of scrimmage to Miko Ryan. All of a sudden now, Ron, this is a football game. The Alabama fans sense it too. Defense sense it. They finally got a score by the special teams. Marco Ryan's uh, on the blitz, just ran by Marcus McNeil. And Mike, these are the points that you were making in the first half when you said Alabama needs big plays on both sides of the ball. They really do. So they open special teams big play now big play on the defense second and 14 short drop pass is completed but tackled immediately is uh, Daniels and he goes for a very short gain on the play Ron I want to go back to the two point play because they kicked the extra point a lot of people may have gone for the two to get it an eight point game they decided to one point they didn't want to chase it Alabama so they went they're now nine down if they would have gone for the two they'd have been one score and two point play away from get, getting tied up they're down to ten Campbell steps up here comes pressure gets the pass away and incomplete Cadillac Williams intended receiver and that ball was thrown so close he almost picked off the umpire at the same time. If I'm Tommy Tuberville, I want to get I want to get my defense on the football field right now. My special teams has let me down. My offense is a little jittery right now. I want to go back and let my defense dominate Alabama's offense. Cody Bliss comes into punt. Only the second punt for Auburn tonight. They're coming after it. Gets it away, and it's a driving spiral. Brooks from the 10. Tries to go back the other direction, and 52 on the kick and 7 on the return. Let's take a timeout. So we are back. You're going to circle Ashley there. You got to yell, roll tight. She has had something to cheer about here in the second half. Chad Williams at tailback. And he gets the handoff. Williams right up the middle. Big opening. 30, 35. And he is all the way out to the 40-yard line. Now, 23 yards from the start of the second half. 96 yards in the kick return. A blitz on first down, and now the offense showing Mike that they are energized coming out of the locker yeah, they room. They really are. Whatever Mike Shulin, the coaching staff, said to this Alabama football team, they're a different group here in the third quarter. Hudson now comes in a tailback. He gets the handoff, turns the corner, runs over the defensive back, and is close to another first down as Junior Rose Green came up and is asking now for the license plate on the truck. <laughs> a junior Rose Green may, makes the play, and you just watch the sidelines, Ron, and you can tell Alabama's players are in this thing right now. They're congratulating each other. They're stamping up. To the line, they're making plays. Auburn, little, they're a little uh, stunned right now. Shad Williams, right up the middle, another big opening, and he crashes into a defensive back, and that's a pickup of 13 yards. Carlos Rogers finally made the stop. And this is exactly what Dave Rader, the offensive coordinator, wants to do right now. He can, if he can get the ball in Sean Williams' hands and just keep running the football against Auburn, they'll be in this football game with a chance to win it. There's, There's Dave, Dave Rader. Now Hudson comes back into the lineup. Good one-two punch. He will take it for a couple of yards. McNeil makes the tackle. And for those sitting at home and say, well, why that? You got to continue to make sure that Auburn's defense stays honest. 
Yeah, you really do because you get in long yardage situations and you get in trouble. Both these teams, Auburn and Alabama, when they get beat, they have bad first down plays. And of course, the other thing you've got to do if you're Brody Coyle, you got to make sure you know where number 11 is because Carlos Densby is an offense wrecker. Coyle, short drop, quick pass over the middle, got it complete, and that's Folsom, and he will have another Alabama first down. The new line of scrimmage will be the 24-yard line. It's good for 15. Football coaches can't stop the momentum like basketball coaches with timeouts. But right now, everything is going Alabama's way. Folsom with a good catch, a well-thrown football by Brody Coyle. Besides the running plays, Mike, shorter drops, move the pocket just a little bit to give him just that extra second to get his passes away. Ron, you're right. Good balance right now in the play calling. Shad Williams, left side, not much doing on this play, and guess who? Number 11, Carlos Dansby, is the first man to get there to make the hit. Carlos Dansby, a very good linebacker, the leading tackler on this football team. He's got six tonight unofficially with us, Mike. Lomax. Matt Lomax lines up at tight end. He has played center. For Alabama this year, they are so short on tight ends they've had to use him for blocking purposes. Wide open, 10 yard line for him, and finally being pushed out of bounds at the five. It is first and goal, Alabama. Williams on a stop, but it's an 18 yard game. Ron, he ran a great route, great for him. He's going to work inside on Kevin Hobbs. Kevin Hobbs falls down, and Fulgham is so wide open. Great route. And Coyle has an open receiver to get the ball to. Biggest difference here in the second half. He really does. He's got time to look up and find an open receiver and dial it in. Look at this. This drive, 76 yards, total of 109 in the entire first half. Williams bounces it up the middle. Two, one, touchdown, Alabama. Matt Lomax with a paving block. Counter play up inside, well blocked by that offensive line. Shaw Williams reaches in the end zone. How about this? Eight plays, 82 yards, three minutes, 48 seconds. Bostic with the extra point attempt. He's got it. So we'll take a timeout. 9.06 left in the third quarter. And our new score, 18 to 16. Auburn's margin cut to a deuce. So we're back. And boy, I mean, the faithful from Alabama, they are up and making a lot of noise. How about these numbers? First half, Shad Williams, eight carries, 43 yards on that drive. Four carries, 40 yards, and a touchdown. He's been the difference. Now, if you're Auburn, your defense is shaken, your special team's shaken, your offense is shook up. You need somebody to step forward and stop. Jason Campbell's that man. Kyle Robinson to kick it off. Alabama's playing like they're having fun. Kickoff. Cadillac Williams, one of the deep men, and he will gather it in at the 11. Cadillac running over people as he crosses the 30 to the 32. That last drive, Mike. Yeah, they just uh, really blocked the offensive line. Shot Williams starts outside. You can see there's nobody there, and he gets all the way to the secondary. Then he runs in a little misdirection play. He's in the secondary, and Herring makes the play. Now the pass. Fulgham wide open, the Hobbs fell down, good move. And then Sean Williams takes it in the end zone and gets this game a little tighter.
Shot getting a breather across the way. First down for the Auburn Tigers. Campbell sets in the pocket, got his pass complete to Daniels, and tackled immediately. It's going to be about a five yard gain. Madison is there. I, I really believe everything's going to be on the back of Jason Campbell right now because they're having a hard time running the football. Well, Daniels looks as though that he injured that wrist. You see him immediately coming to the sideline to get the trainers to look it over. Alabama's defense, they win this football game. This defense has been the reason. Daniels, five catches, 52 yards. He's the leading receiver tonight. Cadillac. I'll tell you what, since Whitehurst has become their man, and they've gotten him in on a regular basis. They have been really tough on offense. Right? They have great wide receivers at Clemson. About to hit the midway mark of the third quarter. It has been an interesting affair to say the least. This pass thrown complete to Taylor. And Courtney still in bounds at the 50 yard line. I like what you know the offensive coordinator is doing right now. He's spreading the field. He knows Alabama's defense got up a little bit on him. They stopped the run, make it tough to run against them. He's spreading this football field. He's working on these corners. Since Johnson was shaken up, Jake Slaughter operates at fullback. It's Wallace the tight end in motion. But he goes with Cadillac and he run it back into the boundary, cuts it back up. He'll have the first down. Boy, what a quick cut right in between two defenders and slaughter with a very nice block on the play. And you're looking at a great back here, Carnell Williams, who a lot of people think is going to come out this year. He said he's going to stay in, but I think the coaching situation will determine whether he goes or stays. Well, there are all kind of rumors that the Brandon Jacobs, if he comes back, possibly would transfer. Cadillac's got 100 yards and 12 carries. Make it 110. Make it almost 115 as D'Amico Lyons finally runs him out of bounds. Does a good job of cutting there, Ron. It's setting up the corners. Parnell Williams now. They lost the best blocker they have, Brandon Johnson. Jake Slaughter, as you said, Ron, stepping in there, doing a pretty good job. Good moves by Carnell Williams. Ramsey Robinson probably got a little seasick of that because he was going right and left. And couldn't get his balance to make the tackle. Carnell went right by him. Almost nine yards per try. Short drop. Zings it right over the middle. Got it complete. That's going to be another first down. Courtney Taylor has become their favorite go to guy, the red shirt freshman. And Ron, I said that Jason Campbell's got to step up. You've got to stop the bleeding. You talked about it in Alabama. The defense stopped the bleeding for them. Jason Campbell has to stop the bleeding for Auburn. Well, you have to, you have to be a counter puncher. Otherwise, old Mo will. Hop to the other side and you can't retrieve it. Courtney Taylor is an impressive looking young man. Call receiver. Williams. Not much, but he continues to push the pile about three and a half yards. Roman Harper, who's had an outstanding game tonight, got a fumble recovery, also came up with a pass interception for the Alabama Crimson Tide, is the man who made the tackle. A nice young man when we yeah. talk to him. Uh, You'd be proud for him, Roman Harper, to uh, represent your university. Well, he did play the free safety, and uh, but likes playing that strong or the rover position better. Play action, Campbell got a man, throws it complete to McIntyre. Complete to number 81. I tell you, you have to be impressed also with the fact that Auburn. As I mentioned, you know, Courtney Taylor, they seem to like him a lot, but Daniels has really participated and caught a lot of balls tonight. McIntyre, Obamano with a 64 yard, so they've spread it around. Yeah, a lot of receivers. They got great depth at that position. Big third down. I think they need a touch and not a field goal here. I know they're at home, 
but I think that's important for a counter punch to come back to Alabama. Ninth play of the drive. Quick pass tipped at the line of scrimmage, and I believe Antoine Odom. That can't be called. It'll be waved off they're because the ball was tipped. Antoine Odom, they're going to call that off. They'll put that back in his pocket. Ball was tipped. The ball was tipped. Therefore, there is no pass interference. It's simply an incomplete pass. I think you're right, O'Ron. You holding them to three points. Oldham steps up. He's six foot five. He's like a basketball player. Now he jumps. Gets his hands on that football. Vaughn to attempt a 32-yard field goal. And this actually would be his career from this distance, one of three. Ball is down plenty of distance. He got it. 518 left in the third quarter. We'll take a timeout. 21 to 16 Auburn. A fun night. We still got 10 minutes and 26 seconds left of it. Alabama Auburn. Coyle sets deep, drills it. It is intercepted. That's Herring, Will Herring, the red shirt freshman. Talked about somebody stepping up, making a name for themselves. Will Herring, a walk on. Earned the scholarship, picks that football off. I tell you, he really had to do a great job of concentrating. That was a tough ball to catch. Coach Schuler's reaction. Says, Brody, let's talk. Cadillac. Runs it back into the boundary and then gets uh, treated rather rudely. Madison comes over to make the tackle and then laying some words on him. Ron, you talk about this rivalry. I was on a plane to Atlanta with Private Roland Guy, a BC Range High School, had to be about 18, 19 years old from Mobile, Alabama. On his way to Baghdad, he had his uniform on. He said, I'm an Alabama fan. He said, I, I hope to find out the good news on my trip out there, but we salute all the uh, service men and women. Well, you know, They're Mike, the heroes. In the Atlanta airport when I was uh, coming over, uh, I ran into a group of guys. We have a dead ball, personal foul against the offense, 15 yard penalty wow. from the dead ball spot will be second down. So the major penalty stepped off against Auburn. I ran into a group of guys who had been in Baghdad, been there for almost a year, headed to, uh, to Huntsville. And I got to visit with them. Someone asked every one of them, I said, what's going to be the first meal you're going to have now that you're back home? And they said, steak, <laughs> steak and potatoes. <laughs> yeah, that's good. good to have them back. He's sec second to Prattville for the first down. A long way, 22 yards. Alabama shows blitz. Pope coming right up the middle. Campbell runs out of the blitz and then gets the pass off to Taylor. And he turns a negative into a positive situation. That stops the clock at 9.42. You talk about a big penalty. That was a big penalty they had. Jason Campbell getting flushed out again. Gets squared up and throws the ball to Courtney Taylor. So third down line to make is down at the Alabama 41 yard line. Campbell from the shotgun board. Look at the pressure off the corner. They missed him. Now gets the pass away and it is complete inside the 41 yard line to McIntyre. What a catch by McIntyre. Ball was behind him. Ron, you're right, but what a play by Jason Campbell to yes. get in the football. Alabama had the right defense on the pressure. Jason Campbell. Watch the low snap. Now the pressure on the corner. Now he moves and he throws the ball to McIntyre for the biggest first down of this game. No question about that. Antoine Odom with good pressure. So Auburn. 
continues to move the football, trying to settle things down offensively. And they'll give it to Cardell Williams. Turns it up, spin move inside the 30. Down to around the 27 yard line. Anthony Madison puts it into his trail. Well, Cadillac has been special many times in his career, but in this ball game tonight, 21 carries now for 164 yards. And depending on what happens in the coaching staff, maybe his last game, home game here at Auburn. Hope not. Under nine minutes to play. You see that average almost eight yards per try. And they'll give it to him again. Bounces it outside. A lot of running room. Gets a block at the five. Touchdown, Cadillac. And there is a flag down, and that may be holding against Silas Daniels, I believe, Mike. Boy, if they call that, Silas Daniels just made the biggest mistake because he didn't need to block. He just needed to shield Anthony Madison. And that's what it's going to be, Ron. Yep. From the five-yard line, that's where the hold takes place. Silas Daniels right here against Madison, and you see he would have scored anyway. So again, another mistake by the Salford football team. You can see Coach Trevorville shaking his head like <laughs> he told Adrian coming out of the tunnel. He just said, <laughs> "Not my year. Not my year." <laughs> Oh my. <laughs> Ronnie Brown comes into the ball game to give uh, Cadillac Williams a breather. On first down, they give it to Brown. Fresh legs here, driving the pile. He's got nine yards on this one. Kamiko Ryans was still another tackle for Alabama. The emotions of the week. Tommy Tuberville, but he, his staff, the staff doesn't know anything. Talked to a couple of those coaches. They said they don't know nothing what's going on. But they coached this football team this week. And got them ready. 501 yards. Brown, right side, follows his blockers. He's all the way to the one-foot line. Roman Harper saved the touchdown. But you could see those offensive linemen, they were churning their legs as well. And Cadillac's going to come back onto the field and replace Ronnie Brown. It's a good move. Ronnie Brown with a good effort. But you figure Carnell Williams should have the first shot to take this in the end zone. Slaughter the fullback out front blocking gets his block and like scores it touchdown order. Ben Grubbs also with a good block in the play. So a season high for Carnell Cadillac Williams, 187 yards. John Vaughn to attempt the extra point. He's got it, so we'll take a break. 727 left to play in our ball game and a new score. Auburn 28, Alabama 16. As you see, Slaughter with the block. Cadillac hurdles and the Auburn Tigers now have moved out to a 12 point margin. We'll be right back. So we're back. The Auburn faithful, you know, they're out of that state of shock that they were in to begin third quarter. Hey, young kids, watch what's happening right here. He's a guy that is a star, but what he's saying is all you folks down there in the trenches, I love you, man, because I didn't do it by myself. You no, know, he's he's a great running back, Ron, but he's a smart guy. Yeah. <laughs> he knows those guys. It starts with that group up front. Season high for him tonight. 
and he knows how big this ball game is. Boy, that thing's going to drop. But a good bounce comes up to pro throw, and he will take it to the 38-yard line. Well, let's talk about Parnell Cadillac Williams. First play from scrimmage tonight. He goes 80 yards. I mean, to just electrify this place. And there he gets the last touchdown scored by Auburn to make it 28 to 16. And you see the numbers 23 attempts, 8, 187 yards, and the two touches. His career high is 202 against Syracuse. That was in 02. Ball is loose. Edmonds is down at the bottom of that stack. But Williams was able to get back on the football. Now, Ron, the clock becomes a factor, and you got to throw the football. Will Herring with a big interception set this all up. In the backside, he's going to be hit and down, and it's Eddins again. Hudson comes in at tailback. Pass knocked away. Good defense. Prothro thought a hand was in his back, but the official didn't agree. Boy, Mike Shula's on the field. He wanted the interference. Let's watch Prothro hits. And to his right hand was on yeah. the back, yeah, and Mike Shula saw it and wanted that called. Trey Smith back deep for Auburn. Quick, quick series for the Alabama Crimson Tide. The eighth punt of the night coming up. Freeland's boot. Not quite as long, but a wobbly spiral. Fair catch is called for and made by Trey Smith. So let's take a timeout. Now we've got 554 left in our ball game. So just under six minutes to play in this 2003 edition of the Iron Bowl. Not played in Birmingham anymore, but it'll never be anything but the Iron Bowl, according to these people down here. Alabama fans showing a little consternation now. Boy, they really came back early in the third quarter. But Auburn retrieved what had been there early. And this guy right here played a major part in that reversal of fortune. You know, Mike, I just want to say there's nothing, when you talk about nothing like this series, Scott Johnson, our director, and I got up and walked early this morning, and we do this particularly for this ball game. Uh, and it, it is amazing. The campers, the SUVs, just tents all over the place. And people are up, and we were out just after 7 o'clock, and they're up cooking. Some people party enjoying the little libation at an early time to make sure that they're, I, you know, well oiled before this uh, ball game starts. But I mean, they're friendly, they're into it. Well, there's a personal foul called against against Auburn, so the major step off. But the point is, neither one of these teams came close to living up to this year's expectations. But they're here in record numbers tonight. They were all over the place on the Thursday when we arrived. And it's just, this is such a happening. It, it, and it's an amazing thing when you think about that. Because other rivalries, when the two teams are down a little bit, they normally suffer. This one never does. Now, truly a great state, man, and they love their football. Second down at 18, and uh, we'll see Williams again. And he's going to fight his way up around the 23-yard line. And for Alabama, now, when we'll start with them, they have a bright future. They really showed a lot of determination in the second half. They came out, came after Auburn, and this uh, Mike Shula's got him on the right path. You see the fourth losing season in the last 45 years. But with the coaching changes and what have you, it's also the third in the last seven. Go 
Third down, Auburn. And they'll give it to Williams again. And he'll take it close to the 30-yard line. Roman Harper will come over to make the tackle. And a timeout has been called by Alabama. You can see defensive coordinator Joe Kynes coming up there saying, hey, let's call a timeout, stop the clock at the 423 mark. Let's take a look at the West. LSU now in the driver's seat after having defeated Ole Miss today. Identical records, but of course, head to head competition. Six and one in conference play. Ole Miss falls to eight and three on the season. LSU 10 and one overall. Uh, then comes Arkansas and Auburn. LSU still has to play uh, Arkansas. And that game's in Little Rock, I believe, right? Yes. Alabama's bowl games next week. They got a Y. Auburn will go to bowl game. And, Ron, we need to close the book on Tommy Tuberville. His next game, folks, is tomorrow morning when he meets the president of the university. Good point. President Walker. Uh, I don't think there's any way they should fire this man. And I also said it earlier, Tommy Tuberville shouldn't fire any of his coaches because there's no blame to go. Uh, the expectation level of Auburn was too high this year. The newspaper uh, made them the number one team in the country. And that was way out of line. Well, they were certainly off the mark. <laughs> way off. <laughs> Poorly handled all week here. Poor handled. Poorly handled. Cody Bliss back to punt for Auburn. And again, Brandon Brooks is the deep man. In case you missed it, thing of beauty by him to open the second half with a 96 yard kickoff return. Spiral's not going to turn over, but still pretty good distance. And he runs away from it, and it'll go dead uh, just inside the 30-yard line. Ray Hudson comes in a tailback. Quick pass, short drop. Got to complete, and that's pro throw. And he gets bumped out of bounds right there in front of the Alabama bench. And as we discussed last week, the most difficult thing for Alabama. Now, they do get to play the extra game because they're going out of the continental U.S. to go over and play Hawaii. That is their bowl game, but then the helmets and the pads go up, and they don't get to continue yes. to work, which is very important. I mean, that's, that's almost like an extra spring training for these teams that do get an extra two or three weeks. There's a negative and there's a positive because Mike Shula can – Call those recruits and say, yeah. hey, join us. We got opportunities galore. Play right now. Boyle runs up into the pocket and now just throws this one away. And what he did, he didn't got to throw a flag. Now, this surprises me a little bit. It was beyond the line of scrimmage. Unless we had an illegal receiver downfield, I'd be surprised at grounding because he was beyond the five-yard barrier. Most people say tackle box, but actually it's five yards outside the center. It's determined that the passer was outside the five-yard zone. There we go. The pass went beyond the line of scrimmage. There's no foul. Third down. Well, you you mentioned about Rodgers and uh, we just every game. They heard the boos one more time. <laughs> You know, really, every time we've ever worked a game that he was the referee, and it's been handled just like that extremely well. Tonight, his final regular season game this evening. Whoa, pass almost picked off. Kevin Hobbs cut in front on that one. Intended for Fletcher. He had seven points, six for the touchdown. They would have tacked on the extra point if he could have just held on. He's gone. Fourth down. Alabama, of course, down by 12 points. They'll go for it at the 351 mark. And listen to the Auburn faithful. They are standing and cheering on the defense. Flag is down. Pumped it once. Going to go on top. And he's got a man open. And that is Fletcher. 
and he'll take it in for the touchdown. Now let's check the marker at the line of scrimmage. I think it's going to be movement on Alabama. It's going to come back. So we race a 59 yard touchdown reception. We have illegal motion. I guess the offense, the player was moving toward the line of scrimmage at the snaps. Five yard penalty replay with them. Yeah, the motion man is going to come in motion. Fulgham turns up field. You yeah. see him right here. Yeah. Turn up field, and that's why the call was made. Yeah, the officials got there no choice right there. Nope. Got no choice. You have to throw the flag on that. So now it's fourth down and seven. Here comes the blitz. They pick it up. Coyle runs up into the pocket. Now gets it away and has it complete across the 50. Inside the 45 is Ray Hudson. Still life in this Alabama football team. Brody Crawl with an alert play to get the ball to Hudson. See what Herring was all over him coming in on the blitz. Sports Center coming up next, immediately following our ball game. Coyle sacked at the 50. Reggie Torbor, second time that they had gotten to the quarterback tonight. He gets Reggie Torbor's eighth sack of the season. Recruited to Auburn as a running back. Clock runs now under three minutes to play. Coyle, he's got a man open deep and he goes to him and it is overthrown. That is Fletcher. And you could see Fletcher had about three steps on the defensive back. I think the mistake Zach Fletcher made is he did, didn't run, didn't open it up. Now he stutters and he's looking back. He needs to turn it loose. Ball way overthrown though. Ten of 25, 114 yards and two interceptions. Those are the numbers on Brody Coyle tonight. Here comes a blitz. Heron right up the middle. They pick him up. Deep. Got it. Right over the middle. And that is Fulgham. Well, that's a great throw by Brody Coyle. 26 yards. Dee Dee comes over to make the tackle. Ron, there's a lot of time on this clock yet for Alabama. From the shotgun, quick pass, overthrown, and did he intercept it? No, he trapped it. Rose Green. That junior does a good acting job here. Ball hits the ground. Second and ten, 224 remaining. Coyle, heavy pressure and a sacking. That is Spencer Johnson. And here's the impressive thing, Mike. They sent four, they dropped seven in coverage, and they still get the sack. And Alabama's got to get right back up there. They got two timeouts left, letting a lot of valuable time go. They got to use the timeout here. They they really have given up some time here. You can see Croyle is very frustrated. They had to call the timeout, so we'll take a break. 153 left. We'll be right back. 
Uh, rivalry week. I don't think they've disappointed anybody. Oh. Third down. They got to take this ball down to the 14 yard line, a scrimmage from the 35. Coyle sets a screen. Hudson, near side, blocker in front, cuts it back into the middle, and he's loose at the 10. It'll be first and goal, Alabama. Roger saves a touchdown. 141 left, and that's a 27 yard game. A great play call by Mike Shula and Dave Rader. The screen was right there to Ray Hudson. They're knocking on the door with enough time yet to win this football game. It looked like Evan Mathis came out of a stance. Understandably so, I'll tell you, Torborg has given him fits tonight. Yeah, Evan Mathis is pointing to the referee that maybe they're making a sound over there. Dead ball foul. Ball start. to get the offense. Movement in the offensive line. Clark is snap. Five yard penalty. Still first down. What a great call here. Ray Hudson just turns it upfield, picks up the first down. Caught him in the blitz. So with the penalty, it moves it back to the 14-yard line. First and goal, Alabama. They have only 1.13 left on the clock. They're going to make some magic happen quickly. For the end zone. Couldn't catch it. Caught by the second receiver. That's Castillo. No. Lance Taylor. Lance Ron. Taylor, yep. That was big. Great concentration by Lance Taylor. Luke couldn't hold on. The ball bounces up. And you can see Lance Taylor making sure he had his toes just inside the line. Extra point attempt. Up and good. We got 63 seconds left in our ball game, and it's a five point margin again. You made the point. He watched where his feet were. Lance Taylor talking about number 39. Ball comes off Luke. Watch him look down, catch the football, and make sure his feet are not out of bounds. A big play by Lance Taylor, the senior. Boy, a lot of heart on this Alabama football team. Ron. I'm telling you, it's <laughs> they have given it all here on the field. You know, uh, 63 seconds left. We all know what is about to come. Every Thursday when we go to practice fields, and it happens in practice fields all over the country. Special teams, you spend the extra time working on. And, of course, the onside kick is the one that you probably spend the most time on. Every good hands guy you got on your football team, your Auburn, you got out there. Everybody that can catch the football and hang on. Carlos Dansby, number 11. One of those guys up close. Robinson has got a tee just the way he wants it, and here's the onside cook, kick. Recovered by Alabama, but a flag Touch. is down and touched by Alabama before it was 10 yards. Thurman Ward got on it. Let's go as the injured player for Auburn. Meanwhile, the discussion goes on with the officials. We had encroachment against the kicking team on the kickoff. 
That penalty is declined because we had illegal touching. The ball had not yet gone 10 yards when the kicker team touched it. It'll be Auburn's ball, first and two. The onside kick, the see where it's touched, right there, before it goes 10 yards. One thing you have to watch when you're onside kicking this football is you stay on bounds. There's the ball touched at nine yards. It looks like Lance Taylor, who just caught yeah. that touchdown pass, is the man who was just, boy, he's about a half yard too quick. As Fetchko is being helped over to the bench. So close. Oh, right? okay. I mean, so close. Here's the reaction by Tommy Tuberville. The frustrations all week. And Ron, we talked about nobody from the administration stepped up to help him, but the players stepped up tonight. What did they ever? Campbell takes a knee. Tonight, our player of the game brought to you by Russell Athletic is Carnell Cadillac Williams. Had his best evening of the year. 26 rushes, 204 yards. 7.8 his average and two touchdowns. I want to tell you, Cadillac had eight games of 150 yards plus this year. And that ties Bo Jackson and also James Brooks. Some pretty good company yeah. there, huh? Two great players. And there's a sign there, Ron. How would you like to go to that meeting tomorrow with the president with a win in your back pocket against rival? I mean, you're sitting pretty good, right? You know what? I wouldn't even want to go to the meeting tomorrow. I'd want to go tonight and just say, hey, I don't want to have to toss and turn on this yeah. all night. Just tell me what your decision is. Yeah, well, that's right. And write that check for three million eight hundred thousand dollars in the sports center. Be the end of it. Sports center coming up next. Alabama now out of timeouts. They cannot stop the clock again. Gutsy performance by this man's team, oh, yep. Mike Shula. Brody Croyle looking on. As we mentioned, he will be able to have surgery. On December the 4th. You know that chant will go on into the night. It's great to be an Auburn Tiger. He'll take a knee and that'll do it. That'll be the final play of this year's Iron Bowl. Tupperville and Shula meeting at midfield. And Tupperville literally running toward the locker room. Now, I'm not sure how far he can go. Adrian Carson, you're with uh, Coach Tupperville. Coach, Come just away. describe the level of effort and emotion that went into this win. This is a fans game. The players played their hearts out for them. I know they appreciate it. It's been a long week for all of us. But I'm proud for the Auburn family and everybody here at Auburn. This is a big game, and we're three and four against Alabama. You meet with school administrators tomorrow. Do you think your job is still in jeopardy? I don't care right now. We beat Alabama. Thank you. <laughs> Ron? <laughs> All righty. So the final score is Auburn 28 and Alabama 23. Now for Mike Godfrey to Adrian Carson and our entire crew, I'm Ron Franklin. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. The celebration beginning, and it'll go on into the night. Good night, everybody, from Auburn, Alabama.